You know, they say the word draft bus in NHL history. You could talk uh, about a lot of players, Alexander Daig, a few others. But this guy, not say a draft bus, but he would have been a great second round pick. But the Washington Capitals were so high in this player, decided not only make it, make uh, him their first pick ever, their first, first pick overall in the 1974 amateur draft. Now, this guy puts up some terrific numbers uh, with the Regina Pats before being drafted and won a Memorial Cup with them in 74, so all signs pointed to him being uh, either a star or a superstar. But it didn't work out for Greg Jolie, but we're going to go a little bit of details behind why I think he was a capable NHL player, but not the star that was expected. Now, he first came to Major Providence with those three seasons with the Regina Pats. Now, born in a Rocky Mountain House, May 30th, 1954, in Alberta, uh, eventually it made Calgary's hometown. Now, three years with Regina, his best season was his draft where he put up 92 points in 67 games en route to the title. Now, he was named the Memorial Cup MVP that year and was also an all-star first team at the tournament. He was also a WCHL all-star first team uh, selectee in 73 and 74, and he was a uh, Regina quad captain in that season. Now, he was rated in the Hockey News draft preview uh, issue as the number seven overall prospect in the 74 NHL draft. Now, this was due in part because also his good playoff totals. He had a two goals and two assists and a victory over Calgary that clinched the WCHL playoff crown for Regina. He also had three assists in the victory over Quebec that clinched the Memorial Cup for Regina. Now, he debuted with uh, the Red Wings October 9, 1974, wearing number three. Now, uh, over eight seasons in the AHL, give or take, he had 365 games, 97 points and 21 goals, and, uh, of course, played some time with Detroit. Now, he plays, played on the first Washington Capitals team, again, was the first amateur to sign a pro contract with the Capitals, and he had an assist in his first NHL game, which was also the first game in, in the Capitals franchise. Now, he did have a major injury before the season start, as he had an inflamed Achilles tendon as part of the, you know, the preseason preparations. Now, he missed part of the 75 season with an injured right knee, suffered in a Washington uh, contest against Buffalo on December 5th, 74. Now, he did play left wing and center on Washington's power play that year, and he also set the Washington record uh, since broken with assists in four straight games in 76. Now, he scored Washington's first goal of the 75-76 season versus Pittsburgh on October 7th, 75. However, he missed part of the 76 season with hairline fracture in his ankle. Now, he also broke his left wrist on April 21st, 78 during Game 4 of Detroit's 1978 quarterfinal series versus Montreal and missed the final two contests of the series. Now, the injury required bone graft surgery in the offseason and caused him to miss the start of the 79 campaign. He did not return to action until late February 79 and also missed part of the 79 season with back spasms. Now, although he didn't really have much success in the AHL, he was a consistent AHL player. He won two Calder Cups in the Adirondack after uh, Jolie was traded to Detroit for Brian Watson in 1976. Uh, he was an AHL all, first All-Star team in 85 and a second team All-Star in 84. Now, he signed his contract with Washington right after the draft, eliminating the possibility of being drafted by a WHA team. Now, he also missed part of the 83 season with a knee injury, suffered while playing with Andrew Rondack versus Maine in January of 83. Now, he also missed part of the 85 season with a, with a shoulder injury suffered in January 1985. Now, while in Calgary, hometown, he would uh, work on his farm during the off-seasons. Now, he eventually became a partner in a sporting goods store in Calgary during his playing days and also was named to the defense position on the all-time Regina WHL team by the CHL panel in 1999. Now, Jolie, uh, as part of history as well, uh, as scoring the last goal at Detroit's Olympia sta Stadium, uh, the venerable uh, rink before it was uh, close. Now, they're talking about draft bus. This is where it came from. I think when Washington GM Milt Schmidt 
referred to Jolia at the time as the next Bob Yor. He, well, if he was the next Rick Green, I think people would have been more than happy to say that because Rick Green was really good with Washington. But it just seemed the factors of his injury, uh, six feet one ninety. Of not say uh, he was a he was a uh, uh, a bad player, just bad luck all the way around. Now uh, that second season with Washington, he put up some okay numbers, twenty five points in fifty four games. But the trade to Detroit, he was going to Adirondack either for several games or a number of games between nineteen eighty. And he's in his career in 86. But he was a consistent uh, performer in Adirondack. And I, I tell you why. In 421 regular season games in the AHL, he had 243 points, 39 goals. Uh, and in the playoffs, he had 22 points, including 5 goals in 46 games. So, you know, by 1986, roll around, okay, he was only uh, 30, uh, uh, 32 and he was out of uh, minor hockey and pro hockey pretty well altogether. But that promise of the Washington team, like I said, that 75 team uh, injury riddled, same tune thing with 76 and 77. But when he was given a chance to play a, a full season with uh, Detroit in 78, he put up some really decent numbers. And like I said, he was never, uh, never considered a bad player uh, per se. But, uh, you know, when Bill Schitt, the Schmidt goes around and saying, hey, this is, this is the next Bob Yore. But let's, let's put this in perspective, ladies and gentlemen, okay? First season with the Capitals, he was minus 69 in 44 games. Second season, minus 46 before he was traded to the Red Wings. So over two seasons, he played 99 games, minus 115, despite the fact he had nine goals and 33 assists in those those games. So, but he was drafted by the Phoenix Roadrunners, uh, number one overall in the 74 WHA secret amateur draft, which we've talked about before. But it never, like I said, it never panned out for him. But like I said, a 10-year uh, pro career, uh, you know, playing uh, seven seasons at a Rondack, eight, uh, nine seasons in the AHL, like I said, a decent AHL player that was basically overhyped before he got there. But like I said, he was he would have been a good number four or five defenseman, which he was with Detroit in '78. You know that uh, the last great playoff run they had against Montreal. So anyway, I'm not going to put down Greg Jolie because personally I like his playing style. But if you're caught with an expansion team that only wins eight games in their first season or nine games, what do you think is going to happen? Do you put all the pressure in the world on him? And, uh, you know, uh, it didn't uh, work out. Yvonne Labra was uh, another good defenseman. And uh, uh, let's talk about, let, let's put this in per major perspective, ladies and gentlemen. In 19, the first season of the Capitals, in 1975, okay, let's look at the defenseman, okay, that year. Yvonne Labra that year, a good player, solid player, minus 54. Doug Bones, minus 54, okay. Gord Smith, minus 60. Bill Mickelson, minus 82. Greg was minus 69. Jack Lynch was minus 54. Ron Jones was minus 13. Willie Brossard, minus 30. Murray Anderson, minus 40. So you, you, do, the rough, you do the rough numbers. That team, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that year, 8, 67, and 5. It sums it up right there. Anyway, that's the that's a many lives of Greg Jolie. If you like what you're doing, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good evening. Bye.